Hello and welcome back. I uh, took a break for a while, but I'm back and I'm planning to do more videos. Um, I'm just going to do a wrap-up video here about the windmills I've been making. Uh, here's the assortment I have shown printed. Uh, I'm going to take a few of them away and I'll start talking here about some more specific stuff. Um, for starters, this is the horizontal one I made. Um, everything's pretty loosely press fit so it could swivel and things. Uh, the tail was supposed to be a press fit, but I overly uh, sized it. So it slides out very easy, it falls right out. I'm going to take it out right now so it doesn't uh, fall unexpectedly. Uh, I changed a few things about it. One, I would run the wires down the stem. Two, I'd increase the surface area of the blades here. It's kind of hard to see. I've set up for more of the, uh, the vertical ones. But you can see they're actually pretty small. Um, so it takes a fair amount of force to get this moving, but once it does, it does a pretty, pretty good job. Um, I'm not sure if it'll focus there, but essentially I just wanted to play around with the airfoil shape, and it's uh, just pretty general. Um, overall, I mean, these things generate a fair amount of noise, and they kind of can be annoying to neighbors, so I'm not going to build one of those. But I was kind of curious about the, uh, the vertical ones here. Uh, this was my first attempt playing around with it. I didn't know anything at all when I started this one. Um, I got the airflow shape kind of right. And I also wanted to play around with the uh, shape of it. Because I'm sure you've all seen the giant egg beater like ones. I kind of wanted to replicate that effect. And uh, I kind of know why. Uh, basically by doing this you increase the surface area of a blade you can actually fit onto a shaft. Um, for this size it wasn't that much of an increase of surface area. In fact, it might have been actually detrimental to this one just because I messed up the oil airfoil shape and they're pretty pretty broad around the front. Um, so that was my first attempt. It, it, it actually did work a little. Not anywhere near sufficient shape. My second attempt was the uh, vein kind of design. Uh, this one worked fairly well. Uh, the airfoil shape I definitely improved upon what I was working with before. Uh, it just uses a little 12 volt AC motor from a um, DVD drive from an old computer. I just made a press fit rim to go around it. Um, this one it worked fairly well. Oh, give it a little spin. Um, the design I definitely liked it because I managed to make it so I didn't need any support material to print it. Um, as you can see, the, the, the veins themselves are kind of small. So overall, it, it worked. But it wasn't the fastest turning, probably because I had too many veins. So then I went on to this one. As you can see, I actually made the veins much shorter, and yet I made them bigger. And this one generated a lot more force and uh, a lot more efficient. I used a very similar design on the inside veins there. No support material needed. Same motor, same everything, just much more efficient design. And then I decided that the vein ones are probably the way to go. <clears throat> Excuse me there. Um, so I went on to a helical design because I just wanted to see why they're more efficient. And the simple answer is because at any point it's generating force. No matter what angle the wind's coming at, uh, at some area of the blade it's being hit and it's generating force. So it's much more efficient design. It does seem to take a little more to get going. Um, this particular one, uh, not the best print job I did. Because of its size it actually hit some of the limits of my uh, printer. And that caused it to kind of cause errors, as you can see here, and some in there. Um, in fact, it's not actually properly on axis. I'm not sure if you can see it. I, mean, I can, but I can barely see it out the camera, let alone through it. But essentially, it, it just wasn't the greatest print job, just because I was... Not, I forgot some details about my printer. Um, but overall, I like the helical design. So, I actually did go ahead and make... One more final design, and uh, it's a simple three-vein sort of thing. I did again. I just designed such a way that I didn't need any support material. Um, I am going to be posting video of it being printed at some point here. Once I get around to doing it, now I did get a new camera over the uh, holidays, so hopefully from now on, whenever I do something, it'll be much clearer. I also printed some gears. I kind of a table for me to mount stuff to. Uh, I also have this motor here, which I intend to hook it up to, so I can actually figure out you know, all the details about 
uh, you know, force to power ratios and size, speed, all the all the great details I'm gonna need for building my full scale ones. Um, but the thing about 3D printers, you know, the edges here are still a little rough because I told it to print something thinner than cost would be. So I just take a little sandpaper and kind of sand them down a tiny bit just to make them smooth. I also need to sand down the shaft because the inside diameters are a little tight. Sometimes a 3D printer, when it's making uh, inside diameters, inside sizes, uh, it goes a little small just because it, just because of the way it works. Mainly the software. I mean, you could probably build something to compensate for it, but it just do it when you're designing, people. And uh, yeah, you can see here, I made this gear to fit into three pegs. Uh, not quite. It's very close, but it's just going to take a little bit of uh, sanding on all sides, just to narrow down tolerances, just enough to press fit it. Um, I actually have to drill out the hole there a little bit because it somehow got really undersized. I might have just measured incorrectly or typed in the wrong value for that one. Uh, not too happy with that. That was kind of a failure on my part. But I did some gears. The gears themselves, uh, tolerance is pretty good. Um, I'm looking forward to showing you guys what it does when it's all put together. And I'm back after uh, doing some sanding and some other work on the parts. Um, well, I don't have some issues. I'll show you here as I go. One, I did get this pretty fast to just find the holes. Plug it nice and fit. And a uh, quick drill bit on that. And then it too. Fits in nice and snug. Um, I'm not going to show you how to put the motor in because I ended up having to just tap it in place of a hammer so it's not going anywhere. Um, and that just fits on the shaft. Now, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to show you this working the way I want it right now. Um, I'll probably reprint the shaft has a little bit of a bulge on it, so it's very stiff even after sanding. See? But, because I don't want to leave things without showing you, I just quickly uh, threw a piece of connects on a rod here. And I have a fan off to the side. Just turn it on. I'll put that quickly on the shaft there. I'll just show you. It's going backwards. Give me a second here. And there we go. It's a little bit coaxing, but even on a uh, proper shaft, it is spinning. Even with a fan blowing up right But uh, you know, sometimes you just run the technical issues doing stuff but I can't leave you with anything so I'm going to show you again this will design I think I'm going to go with something upscale to this maybe four veins three or four this one in the wind turns no problem that's the same amount of wind as you can see the other one's slowly getting blown off all right thanks for watching that's been uh, a wrap up of windmills. Thanks.